Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News Weekend Edition. Good evening, I'm Katie Cook. New today, we are learning that a man was killed in a logging accident in Letcher County. Officials from Kentucky State Police say 22-year-old David Thomas was killed Saturday morning. Thomas was from Knott County. Police say a felled tree was stuck in another tree when it fell to the ground, killing Thomas. There were no reports of other injuries in the investigation. The incident remains under investigation by Kentucky State Police. Earlier this week, a fire destroyed a home in Pike County. It happened in the Coal Run community. Now the family that lived in the home are thankful only items were destroyed and no one was hurt. WYMT's Marion Fletcher spoke with a man who grew up in the home. This is all that is left. I lived there for most of my life. Corbin Bentley's family home in Coal Run destroyed by a fire. I couldn't believe the, just the sheer intensity of that fire. Although Corbin was not there at the time, his stepfather was working in a building nearby. He was just coming out of the workshop when he heard a, a large bang. Now many mementos are missing, but one piece most important to Corbin survived. My cat luckily escaped the fire before it got too bad. Missing overnight, those scary hours are moments Corbin does not want to relive. Well, it's a lot of panicked hours. I went around the neighborhood searching for him. I got up the next morning. I laid food, laid treats out. Thankfully, a neighbor found Nano. It's a, it's a lot of relief. Um, uh, I'm not ashamed to say I cried just like a little bit. And although many items are destroyed, Corbin and his family are thankful no one was injured in the devastating fire in Pike County. Marianne Fletcher, WYMT Mountain News. The cause of the fire is unknown at this time. Corbin Bentley's stepfather was still living in that home. We have information on how you can help his family on our website, WYMT.com. Well, the Leslie County Community welcomed home Deputy Shane Wilson this afternoon with a police escort. Wilson was shot in the hand yesterday in the Asher community after pulling over a truck. He had surgery yesterday. Wilson is just 21 years old and has been with the Sheriff's Department for about two months. Friends and family tell us that he is doing well and is in good spirits, but he will still need months of therapy. I mean, that's just the guy he is. You know, he just stays in good spirits. He's just a it's all around great guy. Like I said, he does a phenomenal job, and uh, I mean, we're, we're blessed to have him, and uh, it's an honor to work with him. Uh, I'm glad he's, he's going to be back. The shooting is still under investigation. Three people have been taken into custody. Uh -huh. One of them, Tyler France, was on the run but has been captured. Police say they will release the names of the other two and charges tomorrow. And a West Virginia firefighter has died after his volunteer fire department's truck crashed while responding to an emergency call. Officials with the city of Spencer say Mark Horwich was killed Saturday. His fire truck went off a narrow road en route to a structure fire in Rowan County. Horwich was a member of the Clover Volunteer Fire Department. The Rowan County Sheriff's Office is investigating the accident, which closed the road for several hours. Well, most of us are looking at pretty good conditions heading into tonight. However, those showers we saw yesterday, yesterday have less, left a couple of our rivers with a little bit higher levels of water than normal. The National Weather Service did issue this flood advisory a little earlier today for parts of the Kentucky River in Estill County. This is going to go into effect, or this is going to go in effect until 1 p.m. tomorrow. So just be careful if you're out and be aware of those higher levels over there. But overall, looking at great conditions tonight for most of us, those clouds over the past couple of hours have really pushed north and have left us with some mostly clear skies heading into tonight. Temperatures still a little bit on the warmer side. We're seeing temperatures in those 50s and 40s for those of us a little up north where we're seeing a little bit more of that cloud cover. But overall, comfortable conditions, and we're going to continue to see those nice conditions as we head into tonight. Overnight lows only getting into those lower 40s, so a little bit on the warmer side there for us. Katie? Thank you, Brooke.
As homeowners are picking up the pieces left behind after last night's storm, so are employees with Eastern Kentucky University. The school's historic White Hall had significant roof damage and several trees uprooted. Officials say while the damage was significant, it could have been much worse. Uh, we did have a very quick response from EKU personnel to ensure that any antiquities that are located within the structure were very quickly moved to safe places within the building uh, to ensure that very little to no uh, historical artifacts were damaged. Officials are still assessing how much repairs to the outside and inside of the building will cost. They are just grateful no one was hurt during the storm. Well, Haley Robick, the daughter of University of Kentucky assistant basketball coach John Robick, is reaching out through social media to find a liver donor. Robick says she is battling liver cancer. She posted on Instagram that she has been battling the illness over the past couple of months. She encourages anyone who could be a match for herself or others in need to sign up on the Living Donor Registration's website. Member of the sports community have come together to share Haley's message, including UK men's basketball coach John Cal Perry. And in the past few years, the Letcher County Sheriff's Office has made, has made, has helped drug addicts, has, <laughs> has made helping drug addicts one of their top priorities. Judge Kevin Mullins and Sheriff Mickey Steins was working together with Addiction Recovery Care to help those facing addiction enter rehab. Allison Rose is one of the success stories being arrested in 2018 for meth use. She was three weeks pregnant with three children at home. Now she is 18 months clean and working as an intake coordinator for addiction recovery care. She says being arrested was actually the biggest blessing. And it's great we're having a judge that understands and he knows that, you know, prison and jail is not the answer and he sees that what the outcome is because, you know, I'm one of them. We will have more of Allison's recovery story tonight at 11. Stay with us. We'll be right back.